Hi, I'm Ben Shelley, and in this tutorial, we'll be applying an animated texture to a phone and compositing it together in After Effects. Uh, this tutorial will be appropriate for beginners as well. We will be covering several skills, and it might just be a good idea for you to jump right to them by clicking on the links in the description below. But when creating an app video where you're going to be showing an electronic device with a screen with all the uh, information on it, it would be a very good idea to render that screen out as a separate element to the phone with all the nice reflections uh, so that you can uh, make changes when needed because I can guarantee you that the client will change their mind about what they want on the screen. During the development process it may be a good idea to apply a rough corner pin track in After Effects which will allow you to edit with a live preview so you can see really um, how big things need to be and how it looks at different angles. So once you're happy with the end result and your preview in After Effects, you are ready to commit to uh, setting up an image sequence in Maya. Now, first of all, we need to create something to animate on our screen. Um, this might be something from After Effects, um, but we're going to use uh, something from Maya itself. I'm gonna use a vehicle and I'm gonna set up a turntable and then I can apply this to a image I create in Photoshop, which would be like a fake uh, information screen about the vehicle, maybe with a couple of buttons for the app. And then can uh, bring that into After Effects and render it back out in Maya for the final result. So let's set up a turntable for our vehicle first. I have absolutely no lighting in this scene. I want to keep this as simple as possible just like a phone wouldn't be able to render a live spinning turntable with lots of nice settings i'm just going to leave it with a default maya light so i'm actually it's probably the first time and only time i'll ever really use this is for this sort of situation just go to your common and then go to render options and just make sure a default light is on so that when you press render it looks something like this really simple uh, no shadows or anything like that, but it will render out really quickly, which is great as we don't have much time. So to set up a turntable, there's a couple of methods. Some people like to create a NURBS circle around their object and then apply the camera to it and the camera can rotate around. Um, this is great if it's a still scene, like you set up a, a house with an environment and sun and everything. Um, but it's not as good if you want, if you do actually want the object itself to rotate and you have some maybe studio lighting set up behind the camera. So we're gonna just rotate the object itself. Uh, first of all, freeze transformations so that um, everything on the attributes over here, if I go to the channel box, uh, everything should be at zero. And I can highlight my rotate Y and press or right click and go to key selected. And I'm gonna go to frame 48 as I want the rotation to last for two seconds. And at frame 48, I'll type in 360, press enter, and then go to key selected. And so at frame one, it should say zero, and at frame 48, it should say 360. And if I scroll along here, we can see the car does spin around and goes back to the original position. Now there is a slight problem. We'll notice that as we uh, drag the slider along, it goes from being quite slow to speeding up to being slow again. If we go to our animation editors and graph editor, we'll see that the animation, which is represented by this line here, does have a slight S shape to it, which is telling us it's going from, speed is going from quite slow to quite fast and then slow again, as it nearly levels back out to a straight line there. So we need to select both points or select everything in the graph editor and then straighten them out here. And now if we preview uh, how this looks, we'll see the car is spinning at a constant speed, which is what we need. So we can close the graph editor. So now we have the basis for our turntable set up, we will be able to loop this in After Effects, which will save render time. So if we go to render settings and in common, we just need to make sure we've got the following things set up. So I'm gonna call the file name uh, car turntable. We need to make sure the image format is PNG or TIFF, which will preserve transparency and give us good quality uh, image results. The frame animation extension needs to be name number EXT or name underscore number EXT, which will unlock the batch render or image sequence uh, settings here. Frame padding can be two or three. Uh, start frame needs to be one. 
and end frame, I'm actually going to change this to 47. So just one frame away from when it gets back to normal. Because we can see at frame 1 is exactly the same as frame 48. And so if this was to be looped, you would have two frames the same. So you'd notice maybe a slight jatter um, whenever the car starts its loop again, which isn't what we want. So we're going to end the batch render at frame 47. And then we do not need to renumber. Uh, renderable camera, just check you've got camera 1, which is what we need. Presets, HD720. Since this is going to be on a small screen, you could do less. So if you want to make it any smaller, let's say you set up quite a heavily lit scene and you want to change this down because you know it's only going to be appearing on a phone, we could keep the maintain width height ratio and just go to height. You could maybe go into 600 and uh, it would keep the aspect ratio there for you, as you can see from your resolution gate there. Okay. So 1066 by 600 should be uh, a small but acceptable result there. I'm going to zoom the camera in ever so slightly um, as well now that we've done that. Just so the car does not go out of shot. It looks like the bonnet gets quite close to it there. So I'm going to pan the camera to the right slightly and just make sure this camera's set up now that we've cropped in the size of it. And that should be fine. Now we can close this uh, we just need to make sure it's going to the right project as well. So we can go to File, Set Project, and make sure that you set the project to the correct Maya folder. And make sure your Images folder is all cleaned out there as well, because um, this is where these batch renders will be going. So I'll press Close, and then go to Rendering, Render, Batch Render, and click on the Options box next to it. And if you want to speed up your rendering process, just type in how many cores your computer has. I've got 12, so I'm going to punch that in there and then go batch render. And we'll see down here the information that should be displayed about uh, what frame it's on. Okay, once our rendering is finished, you should be able to see your renders in the images folder or whatever uh, render layer you've set them up under. What we'll do now is check the size of the phone's screen before we create the image to be put on it in Photoshop. So uh, if we go to our, our phone file or whatever device you've created, we can uh, start to isolate uh, the face that we need. Now, um, hopefully you can just load up a file that has a phone against a flat surface. Um, but just in case you've been animating the same file all along, um, I'm just going to uh, do this for you. I'm going to duplicate the phone and just manually now by eye I have to rotate and try and uh, get it back to a, uh, a flat position. If you've still got history now would be a good time to just type in uh, zero everywhere um, otherwise you'll have to just by eye uh, flatten out the phone uh, there. Now if we go to, I'm just going to move this out of the way of our lights if we go to our top view, which is by pressing spacebar, we can go to top view there and pan up a bit. I'm going to rotate my phone just this way like that and then select the faces that I want the screen to be at. So I'm going to pop a line just about there. Um, now when you press 3, things are going to move. So if you want to be very specific, um, you're going to have trouble. But um, So press 1 to go to unsmooth. Um, view just to get an accurate view of where your screen is because obviously when you press uh, if I just demonstrate this if I press 3 you can see how much smaller things get so you have to press 1 first um, I'm going to add another edge just along there okay so I can double click my way along there and I might have to manually whoops manually click my way along here and then I'm just going to shift select and delete everything else later on we will need to just have uh, just render off this single plane there so there's several ways you can get things out of uh, Maya and into Photoshop uh, without too much effort I'm just gonna uh, dead lazy and do a screen grab okay just to get the right sort of shape and then in I can copy that I can go into Photoshop and do file new and it should have created one that's about the same dimensions as that and do control V and it's going to crop this down exactly to the edge of the plane there 
Obviously, if you don't get it quite right, there might be a tiny bit of stretching. It depends how much you are concerned about that. But this should avoid that. Okay, and then we can turn that off, and then we can go to image, image size, and you want to try and keep it at something around HD. Um, so if I go to height, uh, let's just do 720, and we'll see whatever the width is and be okay with that. I'm just going to drag in a test, one of our renders, into uh, Photoshop. Now in Windows, I think we'll see the background is white, which is what we want. If we drag this into Photoshop, um, I'm going to drag it into its own document up here, not into the one we just created. You'll see the background is black. But if you go to Channels, you'll see there is an alpha there. So we can just uh, unlock the layer. So I'm just going to duplicate that real quick and then delete this one. I'm just going to put a new layer behind it. And then if we go to Channels and Control click on Alpha 1 and then go to Layers and then hit Control shift i for inverse you won't notice much but now we are selecting the black area not the car and then we can press delete okay and then uh, we'll just be left with the car if you get any weird artifacts like i have there's probably something to do with the fact that we've only used maya uh, default light which i've only done to save time on this occasion i'm just going to duplicate that layer and then any extra transparency stuff should go away and then i can just merge those layers together and uh, I'm then just going to select all, Control A, Control C, and then Control V into our uh, screen that we're going to create here. Okay, you can do whatever you like. I'm just going to create a really simple, uh, really simple background here. Okay, I've uh, set up this uh, image in Photoshop with a uh, one of my sample renders. I'm going to turn the sample render off, um, and then I can save this ready to go into After Effects. So I'll go File, Save As, save this into my um, After Effects source folder. So I'm just going to name this Phone Screen 1 and save as a JPEG. Uh, once we're in After Effects, we can navigate to our After Effects source folder and we should see our Phone Screen 1 in there. And then we also need to import our car turntable image sequences. It should come along the same TIFF sequence there, which is fine. So we can open that out. And if we want to make sure we choose straight unmatted to preserve the alpha channel uh, transparency there. And then we can drag the phone screen into our work area down here. Yeah. And what that will do, we'll create, if we go to composition settings, uh, an image that's the exact size that we need for our phone screen. So it's used the dimensions of that JPEG image for the dimensions of our composition, which is great. And then we can put our car turntable in as well. We're going to drag that into our timeline. Now, if we go to our composition settings, we know we only need to set this as uh, two seconds. So duration should be two seconds. And once we've done that, we need to make sure that we're telling After Effects to interpret the footage as uh, 24 frames per second instead of the default 30. And we can drag the duration of that out there. And if we put the image underneath the image sequence, we should be able to see the car on top. Um, hopefully you've applied some nicer lighting to this. If you haven't, it's not a problem. Uh, it would still be fine. Okay, now if we drag our time slider along, we'll see that we've got an animated car here um, in our screen, which is great. Now, we've got to work out how long we want this to uh, run for uh, in Maya. Just for flexibility, I'm going to add another second to the composition. So, three, yeah, I was going to add this changes to three seconds. Um, if I zoom out using the uh, this tool here, I can see... Uh, I need to stretch this out a bit more. And because this is a turntable, just to demonstrate, if all I have to do is duplicate this and move it to exactly there, you might have to zoom in very closely on the joining up area here. But I can see I've lined it up exactly perfectly. And now uh, I can see that it's looping the uh, batch renders quite nicely. So we're now ready to render this off for Maya. Now, we're going to render this off as an image sequence because Maya doesn't like uh, movies too much. So 
In order to render off an image sequence from After Effects, we can just go to Composition, Make Movie, or Add to Render Queue by hitting Control M is a shortcut there. We'll see in, in our Render Queue tab, our project has been added here. So, so we'll go to Output Module, we'll, we'll click on the word Lossless, and then in the format at the top, we can go to JPEG sequence. We don't need to keep any transparency, so JPEG sequence will be just fine. And in the format options here, uh, we can just make sure the quality is set to maximum so we don't lose any detail there. And then we can hit OK. OK, now Maya is very picky when it comes to the naming conventions of image sequences that uh, go into it. So we have to go to Output 2, click on the drop down arrow here, and then go to Custom. And so we've got the comp name, and then we need to have a dot instead of an underscore, and then the brackets with the numbers of the file, and then another dot with the extension. So it should comp name dot image number dot file extension, then press OK. So now we can make sure that we're outputting to the right place. So if I go to um, my After Effects project, I want it. I still want it to be in source. So I'm going to make a new folder, and this is going to be phone screen one, and then it should be rendering into there. And then I can hit render, and we should be ready to roll. Now, if we go into our uh, source uh, here, we can go to phone screen one, and we'll see it's made us. These images that we might not be able to see in Windows because of the way that they've been named. And now we can go into Maya and uh, apply this to our phone. Okay, so I'll go back into my phone scene here. And uh, as I detach the piece of geometry bef before this point, um, I've actually added some more detail to it and made it a, a different size uh, to the geometry that we have animated. So. All I have to do is just line this up alongside the phone and it doesn't really matter where I add these edge loops as long as they are now uh, going to be the same width as the piece I previously cut out. So I'm just going to add an edge loop to my animated phone just there and another one just there so it does line up nicely. And then I can delete that one. And now if I go to face I can start to select these faces. Whoops. Select these spaces again by holding down shift and then I'll go to right click assign new material and this is going to be a surface shader. So I'm going to click on surface shader and then I will go uh, delete history and I'm going to rename this to animated screen and press enter. So once we've got animated screen over here we can click on out color and we're going to choose a file. So we're going to navigate to our source images folder and we just need to drag in these phone screen one images from our After Effects project into our Maya one here. So I can just go to source, phone screen one, do control C and copy these into my source images uh, over here. Hopefully here we should be able to go to phone screen one and uh, we should be able to uh, see everything there. Now I'm gonna click open. Okay, so first of all, I need to apply some uh, UV mapping to this. So I'm just going to select these faces that I know I want to keep. Hold down shift, select everything else, press delete. And the only piece of geometry we want in this scene is the uh, screen itself there. I'm even going to delete the one behind it there. Okay. Now, if we go to panels perspective camera one, we can still see that this is does have the same animation applied to it as the whole phone did earlier, which is great. Sometimes you might need to change to a viewport 2.0 for this to work properly. Uh, once you've done that, we'll just go to uh, create UVs, automatic mapping, and then it doesn't do it very well. So you just have to uh, correct it manually. Um, for some reason, maybe because it's an image sequence, it hasn't been very nice to us in the way it's been presented here. So I'm just going to rotate this around and just check my main workspace so it looks about right and stretch the screen into the shape of a perfect uh, square so that it is mapped uh, nicely like that. Uh, once I'm happy with that, I can minimize this and then click on my screen again. Let's delete the history there. Go to animated screen 
uh, click on out color and when we do that we'll see that it has uh, found all the images in that folder uh, that we set these renders to and now if we drag it along the time slider they should be popping up live there so I have got renderer to viewport 2.0 on and I've checked use image sequence and we've gone through the naming conventions and if you've done all that then this is how it should look and you now have an animated texture in Maya which is an extremely useful uh, thing to be able to do. Uh, I can see the duration of my file here is only two seconds long uh, which is fine. I can change uh, if I like where I want to start and end it but uh, I'm quite happy with this. So now if I go to camera one I can just click on uh, a random frame here and then just go to render and just see how this looks. So now all I have to do is uh, go to render settings and change the name of this to phone one screen. Um, image format I'm going to say leave it as TIFF or PNG is also fine. Start and end uh, frames that's great. Uh, everything else is good and then we are ready to go and go to render batch render. And once the render is completed, uh, I should have all my images there. I'm just going to copy these into a folder. So I'm going to name this phone one screen. And then I can cut that folder into my After Effects project file and paste it into your uh, source folder. Now we're ready to, ready to render this on top of our phone. So you can open up whatever project uh, you're doing this in. I'm just going to make a new project here and go to composition at new composition and do uh, preset HD uh, 720 and make sure I'm doing it at 24 frames per second and set the duration uh, three seconds will be fine for now. So I'm going to import first of all the phone renders there and make sure I keep straight unmatted selected and then I can drag phone one into uh, my uh, timeline down here and I've got two seconds of this I just need to make sure I go to interpret footage main and make sure I interpret it as 24 frames per second so we get more of our frames actually showing I'll also import my uh, phone one screen there and press open and Leave that as that. And again, I can drag this into my time slider and be very careful to line it up properly. And again, I need to go to interpret footage main and type in 24 frames per second and hit OK. I'm just going to drag that over the top of the other one. And you can, should be able to see that it is lined up uh, perfectly on top, which is what you want. OK, I'm also going to import uh, a nice background. Again, you can do whatever you like. I'm going to use like a blurry background with a modern city and drag those into there. I've also got a simple top gear lens that I'm just going to sling on top as well. So I'm going to open all those up. Um, so if I import my modern city first of all and just uh, resize that down to something sensible and make sure it's at the back and get my blur uh, layer as well. Okay, I can do some color correction in here really quick just to get my background sorted out for the scenes behind the phones. That's quite an ugly green color there. So I'm just going to go to uh, color correction, hue and saturation, and then just uh, do colorize and choose a uh, lovely blue color. And I can just uh, make this slightly transparent as well, just so we can see a bit of the city uh, very faintly behind it, not to detract from the phone uh, too much. Okay, so now if we drag a slider along, we have got our animation going, our reflections are on there as well, but they're not on top of the video. I'm gonna duplicate the phone one layer. So this is the actual main render of the phone. Duplicate that, that's control D. Move it on top again. And uh, we could have rendered off a single render pass that will render out alpha channeled reflections only. But since we are short on time, just to be really quick, I'm just going to go to layer, blending mode, and I have chosen screen. And that's quite nice there. If you want it to be even more intense, you are obviously welcome to duplicate that even more to double your screening. Alternatively, if you think it's too bright, you are free to go along and 
uh, drag the opacity down a bit as well which I might just do a bit to stop things from getting too greyed out. So now you have a finished phone with reflections that go over the top of the uh, animated screen and uh, there's no problems with tracking either because we've just used the render straight from Maya. So now you're ready to apply this process to uh, your other shots and you should have a really attractive looking video.